Okay, so episode 1 of Chainsaw Man is finally here, and in this video we're about to break down everything you need to know. Throughout this episode we were introduced to a ton of new concepts such as devils, devil contracts, and devil hunters, and today we're going to explain what it all means, while also giving a review of the plot and any small details you might have missed. Just before we get into it though, I'll be doing these reviews every week, so I'd really appreciate it if you hit that sub button if you haven't already, and as usual drop a like as it does help out the channel. Alright, so to set the scene, episode 1 of Chainsaw Man is set all the way back in Japan of 1997 in an alternate reality where these creatures called devils exist. What makes these devils special is that they each have their own unique abilities, as they each represent one thing that humans are afraid of. For example, the zombie devil that we see later on is a representation of humanity's fear of zombies, and the more people are afraid of zombies, the more powerful it gets. By contrast, the tomato devil represents humans' fear of tomatoes, and as you can imagine, it's a pretty weak devil since not many people have this particular fear. Now, at the beginning of the episode, we're introduced to Denji, who's a young devil hunter, and someone who's desperately trying to make money regardless of how he gets it. In the opening scene, he walks to work with Pachita, who's his pet devil, and he recounts how he's literally been selling his own organs to make extra cash. So far, he sold his kidney, one of his nuts, and his right eye, hence why he's wearing an eye patch for like 90% of the episode. On top of that, Denji has a second job cutting trees that makes him around 60,000 yen a month, but to explain why he needs the money this badly, we need to examine his backstory. Years earlier, when Denji looked to be around 10 years old, his dad owed millions of yen to this old gangster from the Yakuza. Before the debt could be paid though, his dad decided to hang himself, meaning the responsibility of paying it was passed down to his young son. This explains why when Denji's father is buried, the old man tells him to have 700,000 ready by the next day or else he's going to be chopped up. A threat like that is basically a death sentence since even Denji knew there was no way he'd be able to make that much money in such a short space of time. Just when it seemed like things couldn't get any worse, a tiny devil dog then appeared from behind this tree with a roaring chainsaw sticking out of his head. One of the rules of this universe is that devils can heal themselves by drinking human blood, and so in all likelihood the chainsaw devil intended to hurt or potentially even kill Denji when it first appeared. However, due to Pachita's pre-existing injuries, he collapsed on the ground before he could do anything, leading to the most important decision of Denji's entire life. In this moment, he realizes that he and this devil should help each other because as things currently stand, they're both going to be dead within a day. Instead of just accepting that fate, he offered Pachita a contract in which the devil gets to regenerate by drinking his blood in exchange for helping to save Denji from the Yakuza. Chapter 17 of the manga confirmed that contracts between a devil and a human are binding, so as long as Denji performed his side of the deal, then Pachita would literally die if he went back on the agreement. This meant that once he drank the blood, the two of them were bound together at least until Denji was safe from the accuser, although the contract could also be broken if either of them was to die. Following that, the next day he uses his new pet chainsaw to slice through the body of a devil, possibly the blobfish devil if I had to guess, and by doing this, Denji proved to the old man that he could be a devil hunter. This was good news for him given that devil corpses are incredibly valuable on the black market, and by going down this path, his father's debt could be repaid over time. Now, back in the present day of the series, despite working for the Yakuza for years, Denji still owes them over 38 million yen, which is why he's been trying all these different methods to get money. In the end though, hunting devils is still the most reliable job he has, and together with Pachita, they brutally slice up the tomato devil early in the episode. When the old man then arrives, he offers Denji over 100,000 yen more than usual, presumably due to the corpse being so huge, but his excitement doesn't last long as he gets hit with a bunch of extra charges. For example, the Yakuza deduct money for admin fees, management costs, debt, and a bunch of other things, and by the end, Denji's left with a fraction of his original reward. As if that wasn't bad enough, once he uses this amount to pay for his water bill and other debts, he's left with the equivalent of 12 US dollars to survive on for the rest of the month. For any normal person, this would be a ridiculous thing to be expected to do, but notice how Denji doesn't even look that surprised. After years of living in poverty, he's at the point where being this broke isn't even strange, evidenced by how casually he tells Pachita that their dinner is a slice of bread. I think from Denji's perspective, this miserable lifestyle is only bearable because he has Pachita, as it's their relationship that allows him to remain kind of upbeat even when trapped in this never-ending debt. Now, before we move on, there's two important things we should mention, starting with this conversation between the old man and one of his minions. During this interaction, he wonders if Denji is fit to be a devil hunter, to which the boss replies by reminding him that real devil hunters would never sell corpses to the Yakuza. This statement was relevant since, to me, it was hinting at the appearance of the public safety devil hunters, who were bound by regulations from the Japanese government. In comparison to them, Denji is essentially a criminal, because not only is he working for the Yakuza, but his contract with Pachita is actually illegal. 
The manga confirmed that humans in Japan can't make contracts with devils unless it's been sanctioned by the authorities, but in typical Denji fashion he just kind of did it anyway. The second thing I wanted to mention is how the Yakuza openly treat Denji like a dog, which directly relates to the title of the episode. At first it's easy to think that the title Dog and Chainsaw is a reference to Pachita, who is very clearly a chainsaw dog. However, the title is also referring to Denji, who's perceived by everyone else as a dog who always does what he's told. In this clip, the Yakuza gangster gives him 100 yen to eat a cigarette, similar to how you might give a dog a treat so that they listen to commands. And later on, the old man straight up compares him to a dog for his loyalty. Considering that by the end of the episode, he then turns into Chainsaw Man, the title Dog and Chainsaw could equally apply to Denji as much as it applies to Pachita. Anyhow, switching over to their home in the woods, the two of them live in a tiny shed overlooking the city, where we see them eating that single slice of bread. In a kind of tragic moment, he tells Pachita that he recently learned that it's normal to have jam on bread instead of just eating it dry, but for them, that type of normality is nothing more than a dream. As long as he has this crushing debt, there's no hope of him having a normal existence, which sucks because it also means he'll never get to go out with a girl. Like he says, he can't exactly invite a girl round to his shady looking cabin in the woods, and he also never has any leftover money to take girls on dates. For those reasons, his chances with the ladies are virtually non-existent, which is why one of his main aspirations is to get with a girl before he dies. In Denji's mind, that would be him achieving his ideal life, and this scene was a perfect example of his relationship with Pachita. Trapped in their hopeless situation, Denji is a dreamer who passes the time by fantasizing about his perfect life, while Pachita is the ultimate listener who genuinely cares what he has to say. In that sense, they are happy just being with each other, because their friendship is the one thing that makes it worth continuing in this inescapable cycle of debt. As they then try to get some rest, Denji's hunger distracts him to the point where he can't sleep, and the longer he stays awake, the more he thinks about his finances, which then makes sleeping impossible. To try to get around this, he starts describing to Pachita what he'd like to dream about, with the typical things including eating bread with jam, flirting with a girl, and playing video games. Basically, normal teenager stuff for the most part. Soon after he finishes talking though, Denji coughs up a serious amount of blood, and this is a consequence of a heart condition that was passed down to him from his mother. The fact Pachita was so shocked indicates that this might be the first time Denji has had these symptoms, and he goes on to reveal that his mother died coughing up blood just like he's doing. The way I see it, this heart disease is meant to symbolize that under normal circumstances, Denji was destined to die a relatively young death, and he'll never live to be old enough to be free of his debt from the Yakuza. However, it's his relationship with Pachita that allows him to avoid this destiny, which becomes clear by the end of the episode when he gets a brand new heart. Before we get to that though, in the middle of the night, the Yakuza boss randomly bangs on the door asking them to hunt another devil, and after a scenic car ride with a few nice shots from above, he drives them to this old abandoned warehouse. This warehouse is supposedly where the devil is meant to be, but even Denji seems confused why one would be in such a remote location. As the boss then silently walks down this dark hallway, out of nowhere, a Yakuza thug ambushes Denji and Pachita from behind, literally stabbing them through the back. The betrayal in this moment was pretty sudden and unexpected, so to explain why it happened, we need to examine the old man's motivations. To put it simply, he wanted the Yakuza to keep growing and make more money, and he believed they could do that by making a contract with a strong devil. By gaining a devil's power, there'd be even less people who could stand against them, but the old man's big mistake was that he made a contract with the zombie devil specifically. As you would expect from a devil with a name like that, his ability is that he can turn humans into zombies, who then have no choice but to follow his commands. In that way, the Yakuza inadvertently turned themselves into his personal servants, and so when they attacked Denji and Pachita, they were actually carrying out his orders. Now, you might then be wondering why Zombie has a problem with these two, seeing as he doesn't even know them, and the answer is that as a devil, he naturally has an intense hatred for devil hunters. It's likely that at some point, the old man mentioned they had a devil hunter working for them, and so once the zombie took control of the Yakuza, he ordered them to set Denji up. What follows this was by far the hardest to watch scene of the entire episode, as an exhausted Denji limps away from a horde of zombie gangsters, before being knocked down and repeatedly stabbed. In the manga, this scene felt relatively quick as it was over within a couple pages, but here, the anime really takes time to make you feel uncomfortable, as the way he's being stabbed is super slow and excruciating, and actually hearing him scream made the whole thing very unsettling. One thing worth highlighting is that as they were killing him, he mentions how he wasn't even asking to be rich, he literally just wanted a normal existence. And this kind of emphasizes how tragic his life has been because, you know, both his parents are dead, he's been forced to pay off this debt that wasn't even his originally, and now he's being murdered before even having the chance to live a normal life. 
Anyway, after the zombies finish tearing him to pieces, the remains of both devil hunters are thrown into the dumpster, and at this stage Denji is 100% dead. Pachita himself is barely hanging onto life as well, but by chance a small drop of Denji's blood trickles down into his mouth. As we already established, human blood has regenerative powers for devils, and as Pachita slowly opens his eye, we get a flashback to when they were tree cutting to make some extra money. During this flashback, Denji acknowledges that one day he might die fighting against devils, and he wonders what would happen to Pachita in that scenario. In theory, the chainsaw devil might starve to death, or he might be killed by another devil hunter, but after thinking about it, Denji does come up with a solution. Generally speaking, there are devils out there who have the potential to take over the dead body of a human, and in the manga, these type of devils are referred to as fiends. Becoming a fiend has several downsides, mainly that the devil loses most of their power and they lose the ability to make contracts, but in certain situations it can be beneficial. For example, the devil gets a whole new, mostly human-like appearance, meaning there's a chance for them to start a new life. This is why Denji gives Pachita the permission to do this to him, and his hope is that if he does die, Pachita will possess his body, escape from the Yakuza, and live a normal life like they always talked about. However, as his body starts being pieced back together, both of their spirits manifest inside of the dumpster for one last conversation. During this exchange, it becomes clear that Pachita is not taking over Denji's body, but rather he's making a new contract between them. In this new deal, Pachita gives Denji his devil heart, in exchange for Denji being the one to live their dreams of a normal life. By gaining a devil heart, Denji's body is able to fully regenerate just like a devil's would, and in the process he regains a ton of body parts. The eye that he sold earlier comes back, his heart condition is no longer an issue given that he has a brand new heart, and on top of that we can assume his missing kidney and testicle returned as well. Additionally, he has a cord coming out of his chest, which as you probably notice is the same cord Pachita used to have for a tail. Seeing that Denji resurrected, the zombie devil then sends his minions to kill him for a second time, and this moment was pretty interesting. Up until now, Denji had always been dreaming about having a normal life, and from his perspective, the people in the Yakuza already had everything a person could want. Because of that, he was confused why they wanted even more power by making this contract with the zombie devil, but eventually he comes to the realization that no matter where people are in life, it's natural for people to fantasize about having things even better. In that sense, dreaming is a perfectly natural thing to do, which is why he doesn't judge the Yakuza for making this contract. But on the flip side, although he's not judging them, they are still standing in the way of the dreams that he wants to accomplish. For that reason, he pulls the cord poking out of his chest almost like he knew exactly what it would do, because within seconds he transforms into actual Chainsaw Man. With Petita's heart inside him, Denji has gained the powers of the Chainsaw Devil, and he naturally uses these new abilities to rip through the horde of zombies. The animation on his chainsaws was virtually flawless in my opinion, and the whole sequence didn't really hold back when it came to the amount of blood. During this massacre, the zombie devil tried to fight back against Denji, but ended up getting sword in half, and what was interesting is that the Yakuza still stayed in their devil forms, even after the zombie devil himself was dead. As Denji then continues to wipe them out one by one, he realizes that if he kills all of them, then he'll be free of his debt, since neither the old man or anyone else would be alive to collect it. This would enable him to finally start living his dreams, which is why he keeps going until he's the only one left standing. Episode 1 then comes to an end the next morning, with a car full of public safety devil hunters pulling up to the warehouse. Leading this group is Makima, who's probably the most recognizable character from the series, and the reason they arrived here was to capture the zombie devil. What they weren't expecting was to find a bunch of zombie corpses with Chainsaw Man standing in the middle, and at first, this guy assumes that Denji is also a devil. Thanks to Makima's amazing sense of smell though, she can tell that he doesn't quite smell like a devil or a human. As Denji then begins to fall down, he innocently asks Makima for a hug, which is a throwback to the manga when he mentioned how one of his dreams was to hug a girl before he died. In episode 1, they kind of changed this line to make it sound like he wanted to score with a girl before he died, which has a lot of different meanings, um, but I guess whichever version you look at, the fact is, touching a girl in any way is something he's always wanted to happen. Following this hug, his chainsaw parts start to melt away, and Makima gives him two options for what happens next. Either option number one, she treats him like a devil and kills him, which is her job, or option number two, she keeps him as her human. Essentially, the choice is either he dies or he becomes Makima's pet, and for Denji, this was a super easy decision. If he picks option number two, then for breakfast, he'll get to have butter with jam, salad, coffee, and maybe even dessert. And uh, yeah, compared to the dry bread that he was used to, this is a dream come true, and it's why he accepts option number two. Before we end the video, one thing I didn't find time to mention was the very opening shot of the episode, which was a dream from the first person perspective of Denji himself. As he walks through a random alleyway, he comes across a locked door, but as he goes to open it, this is what wakes him up. 
I don't really have much to say about that at this point since it's not really relevant to the plot just yet, but in future episodes we will circle back to this. With that said, that was my breakdown for the first episode of Chainsaw Man, and as far as an adaptation goes, this was as perfect as you could expect. That's not me saying the story is perfect, although it is really good, but what I mean is that when you compare what's on the page to what's on the screen, the adaptation brings genuine life into it, especially the facial expressions and the small bits of filler that were added to make certain scenes more impactful. Personally, when you take absolutely everything into account, I'd give this episode a 9.8 out of 10, but do let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Also, if you like this video, then I'd appreciate if you hit that sub button as well. And until the next one, peace out.